Have you ever heard that testosterone levels are lower in men today than they were in men 20 or 30 years ago? Is this true? And if so, what could be causing this? Could it be that dad and grandpa just had superior testes to all of us millennials and Gen Zers? Well, today we're gonna find out by discussing what is potentially causing these lower testosterone levels in these younger male populations, as well as discuss some natural ways to potentially boost your own testosterone before jumping to say something like TRT. It's definitely gonna be a fun one, so let's do this. And a special thanks to Let's Get Checked for sponsoring today's video. So first, I do wanna mention that we have done a handful of other testosterone videos that go into a lot of detail about testosterone production and its function. So I will link those at the end. But just in case you don't have time to watch those, let's include a quick review here of how the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, which you can see in this sagittal head section, and here's the hypothalamus, and here's the pituitary gland, and the hypothalamus secretes gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which then goes to the pituitary gland and tells the pituitary to secrete luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. Luteinizing hormone is the one we care about in this story because luteinizing hormone will circulate in the blood, and when it reaches the testes, it tells the Leydig cells in the testes to secrete testosterone, which you're looking at the inside of a right testicle here. The testes secrete the testosterone into the bloodstream, and once in the bloodstream, the testosterone will leave through the testicular veins, where it can then circulate throughout the entire body and have multiple effects. And some of these main effects are muscle and bone growth, influence on fat distribution, red blood cell production, libido, sperm production, and even influences mood. Now, it is important to note that testosterone naturally declines as we age, starting in our 30s. And again, this is normal. And earlier I implied that testosterone levels are lower in men today than they were 20 or 30 years ago. And when I said that, I'm not referring to this decline that naturally occurs with aging. I'm saying that if you took 30-year-old males today and compared them to 30-year-old males from 20 or 30 years ago, on average, the testosterone levels would be lower. So this means millennials and Gen Zers would have lower testosterone levels compared to their predecessors. So why is that? Well, there are a few explanations for this, and we'll cover some of these starting with what is likely the greatest contributor, and this is the increases that we have seen in body weight throughout the general population over time, specifically the increase in adipose or fatty tissue. Now, this increase of adipose tissue is greatly influenced by us moving and exercising less, as well as our diet. But the reason that adipose tissue can contribute to lower testosterone levels is that it contains enzymes, one in particular called aromatase, which converts testosterone into estrogen. And so more adipose generally means less testosterone and more estrogen. And you can kind of get a little bit of a double whammy with this because increased estrogen affects the amount of a plasma protein called sex hormone binding globulin. Now, what's interesting is that in a healthy male, about 97 to 98% of the total testosterone is bound to either the sex hormone binding globulin and to a lesser extent, another plasma protein called albumin. And the other two to 3% of testosterone is unbound and referred to as free testosterone. And it's the free testosterone that is free and available to bind to testosterone receptors and induce the physiological effects of testosterone. And so the idea is that if you were to change or even increase the amount of sex hormone binding globulin, this could bind up and reduce the overall amount of the free testosterone, making it less available to bind to and stimulate the testosterone receptors throughout the body. So based on what we just discussed, it would make sense that one of the natural things that we can do to boost our testosterone is to do our best to maintain healthy levels of adipose tissue. And this would be done through a healthy diet as well as exercise. And exercise is kind of a double whammy in the positive direction in this case. Not only can it help one to lose weight and maintain a healthy weight, but there have been studies that have shown a boost in post-exercise testosterone levels due to certain types of exercise. And the greatest increases seem to be with higher intensity resistance training that includes compound movements involving multiple joints and multiple muscle groups, such as squats, deadlifts, and even upper body multi-joint presses and pulls. Now, I understand that weight loss is easier said than done. It does take work. But one thing that I think is important to address with discussions surrounding low testosterone is that often men are told that the increase in fat is caused by the low testosterone rather than the other way around of the increased fat causing the low testosterone like we've been talking about today. 
And so sometimes I think this can lead people to think that the only way they're going to be able to lose fat and gain muscle is to get on testosterone replacement therapy, also known as TRT. Now, there are multiple causes of low testosterone, and we'll cover some more of those in just a minute, but this is a mind-boggling statistic to me. There are studies that estimate that up to 25% of males on TRT never even had a test. So are people just going into these clinics and saying, I'm fatigued, libido's low, I'm gaining weight, not putting on muscle very easily, and then the clinics are just like, all right, let's light them up with testosterone without checking their blood levels. Now again, I am not saying TRT doesn't have its place and has not helped many different people because it has. What I am saying is that TRT and diagnosing someone with hypogonadism, which is the medical term for low testosterone, is nuanced and should include testing and a discussion with your healthcare provider. But if you don't have a healthcare provider that you regularly see, then I do wanna share an option with you by introducing the sponsor of today's video, Let's Get Checked and their fantastic range of health tests for men. Now I know what you might be thinking, testosterone video sponsored by an organization that offers testosterone testing, hmm. Well, frankly, I really do like Let's Get Checked because it gives another level of access and privacy to patients that may not have affordable health insurance or again, may have trouble accessing a primary care provider or endocrinologist. But Let's Get Checked makes it incredibly easy to stay on top of your health. They offer a variety of tests for key areas like testosterone levels, STI testing, and even colorectal health screenings. And the best part, you can do it from the comfort of your own home. Here's how it works. You order your test online and it gets delivered straight to your door. Inside, you'll find everything you need to collect a sample with easy to follow instructions and a prepaid envelope to send your sample back. Once it's sent, you'll get your results online in just a few days with professional medical advice available if needed. It's straightforward, efficient, and takes the guesswork out of managing your health. So if you wanna take control and get those health checks done without the fuss, head over to Let's Get Checked by clicking the link in the description and using the code IOHA25 for a special discount on your first test. And now, let's get back to some of those other potential causes of low testosterone. Lack of sleep has also been implicated in decreasing one's overall testosterone levels. Now, is this contributing to that overall decline that we are seeing in men currently? Because you could make the argument on the flip side that getting a good night's sleep was just as challenging 30 years ago as it is today. However, there have been studies and surveys that have suggested that the average sleep duration has declined over the last few decades. But regardless, sleep is a key component of the natural testosterone cycle that occurs throughout a 24 hour period. And lack of sleep can interfere with this cycle and can negatively impact testosterone levels in as little as one week. So definitely don't want to make sleep deprivation a consistent part of your life. Now, luckily you can rebound from this if you get back to getting enough high quality sleep. Now there are those outliers that seem to be able to function on less sleep and still maintain their hormone levels, but most of us require seven to nine hours of sleep and probably best to hedge towards the higher end of that range. But lack of sleep ties into something else that can contribute to lower testosterone, and that is stress. Now acute short-lived stress can actually cause testosterone levels to increase, but this acute short-lived stress would be something like the exercise we previously discussed but both long-term physical and psychological stress is likely to lead to lower testosterone levels. Now, there are some people that may say, as a society, we're more stressed than we ever have been. And that's also debatable because it's not like our parents and grandparents didn't have major challenges and stresses. Maybe they were just better at dealing with it than us. But there's definitely a difference with how we are all currently and constantly plugged in with our phones and electronic devices. And this creates a potential for nonstop easy access to the news, social media, and a pressure to keep up with the Instagram account of the person we've never met before. And it is true that mental health conditions are on the rise. So there may be some level of a connection to lower testosterone levels and these increases in stress, anxiety, and depression. So do your testes a favor and to a lesser degree your ovaries as they produce a small amount of testosterone and find some ways to decrease your overall stress levels. Breathe, meditate, Put your phone down, get outside, participate in hobbies, exercise, and of course, watch zen-inducing videos from the Institute of Human Anatomy. And lastly, let's mention alcohol. Excessive amounts of alcohol may also affect the testosterone-producing cells in the testes. And remember, those cells were called Leydig cells. 
It may also negatively impact the hypothalamus and pituitary gland, which as we learned earlier, essentially tell the Leydig cells to release the testosterone. Now I did say excessive amounts. It's hard to quantify exactly how much would be required for each individual, but someone that is a relatively light drinker, has a few drinks a week, is likely not going to have their testosterone levels affected. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea on some of what we could consider lifestyle causes of low testosterone, and therefore some things that you can try in order to boost your testosterone levels naturally. Again, I think TRT can be an option for people when done properly, but it doesn't come without some risks and potential side effects. So if you are actually diagnosed with hypogonadism or low testosterone, especially if you're younger, it couldn't hurt to start with these lifestyle modifications before jumping to exogenous testosterone. So thanks for watching and supporting the channel. I'll link some of the more detailed testosterone videos here. And of course, we'll see you in the next video.